Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in my tutorial series on how to script and build and just basically everything that you're going to need to know to make Roblox games. So, first things first, with our base plate, we I'm going to give you a rundown really quick of the explorer right here and if you don't see the explorer, you can go up to here, view, and right here, the big ones in the corner, explorer, and then properties, you're going to need properties as well. It's a good idea to have these usually open at all times because you're going to be using them quite frequently, especially the explorer. That's the number one thing you're going to want to have open. So the, so the first thing I should probably start off with is how to move around you're gonna move around like you do kind of in Roblox with W um, WASD to move around like this and then to move the camera around you can hold right click and one re really niche one is that if you hold down the middle mouse wheel then you can do this kinda of thing um, and then w to and then if you wanna move faster than just WASD like this you can use a scroll wheel and that will allow you to grow faster alright so now that we've got the the movement kinda down oh yeah and there's also Q to go down and E to go up now that we have all the movement down we're I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of some of the important parts of the Explorer tab main one is going to be the workspace the workspace is essentially where everything that you um, have that you can see in your game is going to be stored like this base plate right here is inside of the workspace the spawn part it's inside of the workspace everything that visibly renders in the game is going to be located inside the workspace lighting this one deals with you know the sky and stuff like that it's like if you wanted to change around colors and stuff like that, you can with the atmosphere and that kind of stuff. Um, replicated storage, that one is a little bit more complicated. We can, we'll get to that one in a future video. Um, server script service, that's where your server-side scripts are stored. Server storage, it's well, where you store things on the server. And I'll get into how um, the server and the client are different in future videos in the series as well. Starter GUI is where you'll see is where all like the little buttons that appear on your screen come from. That's where they're all stored and then there's all these other ones um, which are a little bit more complex and we'll get into at some other point. So what I'm gonna teach I'm gonna teach you guys real quick is how to change a part's properties. Now the properties of a part are essentially just the information about the part and you can see this in your properties tab if you have it open where right here you can see brick color that's like a color you can get from palette or this color which comes from the RGB section it's material so you can change it to something like ice or force field or ground whatever you want for right now I'm gonna change it to smooth plastic and then there there's all this kinda crazy stuff it might look scary but the more you work with it the easier it's gonna get so what we're going to do is we're going to um first of all we're going to take this part and we're gonna change it to the color red and we're gonna make it anchored anchored basically means that it's stuck in place and physics don't apply to it so like if I run if I run the game real quick with this part not anchored then it'll fall because it's affected by gravity but if I go into the properties window which and you can search up different properties here in the search bar and you search up anchored and you check that off then it'll be floating and it won't have any kind of properties attached to it or I mean physics attached to it so 
yeah, you can, you can, you might say that, oh, if you want to change it to be anchored, then you can just check off anchored, and if you want it to be red, then you can just change it to be red. There we go. And yes, you can do that. But one really crucial thing is that there's times w in games where you don't want a part to just stay red all the time. You might want the color of the part to change to something else, like blue. Or you might want to make it um, invisible. That's with the transparency property. Or you might want to unanchor it so that it falls like a cave collapsing in on the player that kind of thing now how do we do that and that's where our coding starts what we're gonna do is inside of the workspace we're going to click this little plus right here and then we're going to click on script so now we have a script and it should open up a window like this for you um every single script um, opens with print hello world and you can delete that it's not necessary so the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to reference the part right we need to say where is this part located inside of the game so the way you do that is you type game dot workspace dot part now the reason why we use these dots here the dots basically indicate that whatever comes after the dot is inside of that. So the game is everything you see inside of the Explorer. And then inside of the game is Workspace, which is right here. So inside of this entire thing is this one section, Workspace. And inside of the Workspace is the part. So if we look inside of the Workspace here there's the part. So that's how you reference different parts. Game.workspace.part and if you wanted to reference like the spawn location then you do game.workspace.spawn location. That simple. So we want to change its we want to change its color to be red, right? So, just like how we use the dots to indicate that there's something inside of it, when we reach something like a part, the dot can be used to find stuff that's inside of the part. Like, I could go to this part, click plus, and add, like, a, I don't know, a point light in here. Don't worry what that does, but then I could reference the point light, because the point light is inside of the part. But that dot can also be used to reference properties because properties are technically located inside of that part. So we can reference a property and the property is gonna be color, which is right here, dot color. Now notice, if you have suggestions open like this, you should see that right here next to color, it says color three. This is going to be really useful for you because it's going to tell you what you need to do in order to change certain properties. So with the color, we need to use something called color3. So the way we change the color is we have to put an equal sign. So game.workspace.part.color equals, and then it told us to use color3, so we have to type color3 dot new, and then we open parentheses. So this is how you make this is how you um, make a new color set for your part. Now, one useful thing you don't have to reference um, you don't have to memorize the different RGB values for different um, colors. You can click out of the parentheses real quick and then click back in, and you'll see these three little squares and if you click the one in the middle the color wheel then you can just bring this up and you can select your color so we'll just select a bright red and then we click OK and then it'll fill in the value right there for us and we can do that with any um, any color we want if I want to change it to this nice light green we can do that or this faded yellow we could do that 
but for right now, we're going to keep it as a bright red. So, that's, that's nice. Now, if we hit run, then our part, actually, it's, re it's red right now, so we should probably change it to something like white. So, our part is white right now, and when we run the game, it'll run this script as well. So, it should change the color to be red. So, if we click run, look at that. The part is now red. Pretty neat, huh? And last thing we wanted to do as well is we wanted to change it from anchor being false to anchor being true. So it's kind of like how we did with the color. We would do game dot workspace dot part dot anchored since anchored is a property and boolean is what we're going to use. A boolean is just true or false. So anchored, if we want it to be anchored, we type true. And then if we didn't want it to be anchored, we hit false. But we want it to be anchored right now, so we're going to set it to true. So if I delete this line real quick, and I hit run, then the part falls. But if we re-add that line back in, and we hit run, it doesn't move. Because now it's anchored and it has um, no physics applied to it anymore. And there's a ton of different um, properties for different things. Like with this part alone, there's game.work, game.workspace.part, and then if you hit dot, and it'll give you the suggestions. There's its position. There's its material, its color, its C-frame, transparency, anchored, size, orientation, name, brick color, can collide, everything right here. There's a ton of different things. And you can mess around with those, and they'll tell you what you need to do for each one of those when you um, set it with the equal sign. Like, um, transparency is a number between 0 and 1. So transparency, if we wanted to set it to be semi-transparent, we could set it to 0.3, and then it should be a little bit see-through. Yeah, see? You can see a little bit of that checkerboard on the base plate from there. And then we could keep increasing it until it eventually is completely transparent. Yeah, see? It's completely invisible. It's still there. It's just completely transparent or completely invisible all right so that's gonna wrap it up for this first video hope you enjoyed and in the next video we'll be talking a little bit more about properties and then we'll talk a little bit about some extra things like variables see you later